Welcome to Autism Knows No Borders. Discover what's possible when people impacted by autism inspire change and build community. Together with the Global Autism Project, here's your host, Rachel Harmon. Hello, everyone. Today's guest is Timothy Boykin. Tim is an autism self-advocate, author, singer, and influencer. With almost 40,000 followers on TikTok, Tim uses his platform to promote autism acceptance and bring attention to racial inequality. In today's conversation, Tim and I discuss what it was like for him to learn about his diagnosis, how he dealt with bullies throughout school, and why he wants to shine a positive light on autism. As a black autistic male, Tim explains strategies his mom taught him so that he would stay safe during encounters with police officers. He also shares experiences in which he felt he was discriminated against because of his race. In this episode, discover what's possible when the shadow of stereotypes is illuminated by humor and art. For more information about Tim, please visit our show notes at autismknowsnoborders.com. And now, I present you, Timothy Boykin. Hi, Tim. Welcome to Autism Knows No Borders. Hello. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well, Rachel. So, Tim, please introduce yourself. My name is Timothy Boykin. I am 21 years old. I have Asperger's. I am an author, singer, writer, activist, and I am a current college student. Thanks. So, Tim, you were diagnosed with autism when you were four years old. Yes. When did you find out about your autism? I believe I found out around when I was 10 years old. I remember it being the fourth grade, and I would ask my mom, why do I have to go to special classes? Like, basically, I would usually get pulled out of my regular class into, like, special needs classes to learn about my pronunciations, about socializing with others. And I noticed other kids don't have to experience that. So I asked my mom, Why do I have to go to special classes? And she said that I have Asperger's, which is a part of the autism spectrum, which means that I have trouble with eye contact. I can be socially awkward, but my mom reassured me that she loves me and that she will always care for me. Did you know what autism was at that time? I did not know what it was. How did you feel when she explained it to you? Honestly, with my 10-year-old mind, I felt bad because I would usually get bullied a lot and kids would call me the R word. So other kids were already making fun of you? Yeah. After your mom had that talk with you, did you feel any different about yourself? I felt kind of weird. I'm a, I was like at that weird point, like, wow, I am different than other kids in my school. But later on, I found out that my difference is really nice because I realized that I am very smart. I can do the things that other kids can do. I am very nice to others. I started to look at the good side of everything. Maybe I'm different than others, but I'm like having straight A's in my classes. What was it like for you in school? Did you have any friends? Yes, I had some friends and I even have a good amount of associates. How did you deal with the bullies? I dealt it by standing up for myself And I don't mean like fighting. I could just like tell them off. Or if it gets too bad, I just tell the teacher. What would the teacher do? 
the teacher would usually punish the kid and maybe uh, things would stop. Like, it really depends on, like, different situations. I remember one kid calling me a snitch after telling the teacher on him. But there was a one time in high school where a kid was visibly bullying me. And I told the teacher what happened. And she was there to see this. And she was like, well, I don't know if I send this person out, then I will not have like a clean record on the nicest class. And I was thinking to myself, you're not going to do your job just for reputation. And like, no diss, but it, it's kind of messed up. Mm-hmm. So what happened in that situation? I just asked the teacher if I could like take a moment. And I took a moment. And I was like thinking to myself, wow, I, I was pretty sad about it. Mm-hmm. When you were in middle school and high school, were you proud of your autism? Were you being outspoken about it or were you trying to hide it? I was pretty outspoken by it at first. And I'd even told everyone that I knew that I was autistic. But sadly, the bullying continued on being a part of my life. The bullying really never left. Are you bullied now, too, in college? Nope. Which, that is awesome, because it's just a lot of people from different backgrounds trying their best to succeed in life. When you were in high school, how did you socialize with your friends? I might go up to them at the lunch table, seeing how their day was was going, uh, talk about the latest Marvel movie or the latest comic or action movie. Uh, My go-to interest is movies or comics. And even in class, I'll probably talk about the subject and what to do uh, with homework or whatever. Did you ever feel awkward in social situations? Sometimes I do when it comes to meeting new people. What's going on for you in those moments? I might have like said something wrong or just didn't know what to say. I was just thinking to myself, come on, Tim, think. Think of something else to talk about. Think of something else to talk about. But it's like very rare that things are awkward. Mm -hmm. Are there any ways that you feel misunderstood? A lot of people have this stereotype about autistic people that they are just like bad kids and there wasn't like a a quote unquote rise of autism. And I just want to like say to that, that we are not bad kids or nothing. They just really have like trouble processing some things. And even me being black myself, when I was like very, very young, I would be considered a bad kid. When majority of the times I'm good, people just need to be like, hey, Tim, maybe you should like stop this. Maybe you should think about this in a different way. And I would be okay with that. Are there specific things that stress you out about being autistic? What stresses me out is when there's conflict because I haven't been in much fights. And also, it can also be taken as stresses with autism and also as stresses with being Black. Like, just racial moments or racial tensions. That also doesn't make me feel right. Like what? Let's say somebody calls me the N-word. And I just, like, don't want to talk to them. Like I just, like, get out of that situation. Mm-hmm. How does that make you feel? I just, 
I, I, I feel pretty bad because I, I'm really not really a big fan of the word. And I know Black people say it amongst themselves, and I totally understand. But just like the history of the word, that's just like not really for me. Mm-hmm. Did your mom also speak with you about being Black? Yes, many times. What were those conversations like? It, it, it was very amazing because my mom is very informative about a lot of things, but it's also very scary. I have to like do all of this stuff. I have to like jump over track after track after track just to just to show that I am all right. And what is so scary about racial tensions is sometimes the people who are out that are like supposed to protect the citizens are usually out to hurt them. We don't know who is a good protector or a bad. So how does that affect your day-to-day life? I go out and I live my best life. I try to be positive, but also I try to be careful. Like, like whenever I'm driving, try to stay focused. Whenever I'm walking around, I try to be respectful to all people. And that is easy for me, but I mean, trying to look out for every single route. Like, try to watch my back. How old were you when your mom first had the talk with you? I believe that I was around the time of my early teens, like 13. It was around the era of Trayvon Martin and Michael Brown. And she really wants me to be careful, like being like a young man in my teens around that time with dealing with the police. Like try to put my hands up, say, yes, sir, no, sir. Don't make any any fast gestures and tell the officer what what I am about to do. She just like told me, hey, Whenever you get pulled over by the officer, just try, just try to be um, okay. Try to be uh, calm. Yeah, unfortunately, people with autism have a higher chance of having encounters with law enforcement. You know, the scariest part about it is 50% of victims of police brutality are disabled. Mm -hmm. And when you say disabled, you mean not just autism? Yeah, not just autism. It could be bipolar. It could be schizophrenia. Anyone who might seem quote unquote different, they usually get targeted. Have you had any encounters with law enforcement? Now, personally, for me, I haven't. But I remember me being a kid driving with my mom and she get pulled over. And I believe one time she didn't make a turn signal in her own neighborhood and a police was around and the police officer stopped her just for missing a turn signal. He let her off with a warning. Everything was okay, but... It was pretty scary. Right, especially with all of the warnings she had been giving you. Yeah. And there was also another time where I was just driving home. And there was a police officer following me. And I didn't think much of it. I did everything right. I was abiding by the speed limit. But the weird part about that is is when I turned into the neighborhood, the police officer made a massive U-turn and went back to where he was. 
I talked to my mom about that and she said, Tim, that's racial profiling. And also she's like happy that I managed to not be scared, not be jolting, but doing everything right. But it's kind of nerve wracking. Like I'm just, I was thinking about what did I do wrong? I remember one time I was at a clothing store and I asked a random customer about an item. And I also said to the female customer that her hair looks nice. And then later on, I was told to get out of the store. I texted my mom about it and when she came by, the people said that I was quote unquote harassing her. And then my mom wanted to see the cameras to see if I was harassing her. And then come to find out the video evidence showed me like just asking her a question and then complimenting her. I was not doing anything else. And so they let it go. And also the manager was fired. How did you feel in that moment when they kicked you out of the store? I was a bit confused. Like, what did I do wrong? I did not like try to hurt anyone. I'm not trying to be rude. I just asked a question and gave out a compliment. And uh, there was like another time where I was talking to a friend on the phone and she calls me the N-word with the A at the end. And I know it's like a term of endearment in like the Black community, but still, I don't want to be called that. No. And I corrected her very quickly. That you don't call me that. And I hung up the phone. Mm-hmm. Are you usually good about letting people know what you want and what you don't want? Yes. I do my best to be as clear as possible. Not really like that bad of problems recently with communications. Have you always been good at communicating? When I was very young, I wasn't really good at communicating. But now over the years, I've gotten better and better. Mm Mm-hmm. So, Tim, you're graduating from college next year. Yes, I am. That's exciting. Yeah, with my bachelor's in theater and arts and also public speaking. What has college been like for you having autism? At first, it was kind of hard because I have to deal with being with myself. But eventually, with the grace of God, my family... Uh, having my back, I was able to get things done. And also, I found that some of the work is hard in college, but if I put in the effort in asking for help, no matter if it's from peers or from the teacher, I will be successful. Yeah. Don't be afraid to ask for help when you need it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I said in my book, Timster's World. So what makes you so special? We are not anything without the help of others. Yeah, so tell us about your book. Oh, you don't mind if I bring it out, right? No, please do. Timster's World. So what makes you so special? Cool. Did you draw that yourself? Yes, I, I drew that when I was a kid. Can you describe the cover for listeners who can't see it? So in this cover, is this a picture of me in a red shirt and the world as like my background. Cool. So what's the book about? The book is about three different chapters in my life. One is about getting better at my grades and trying to get help from my mom. The second one is about standing up to bullying and making friends. And the third one is about me learning that I have Asperger's and learning who I truly am. Like, I love to sing. 
I love to be friendly. I love peace. What inspired you to write the book? It was after me learning that I had autism. I I was like pretty sad at at the time, but my mom noticed that I learned how to write great stories. She also know that I love to draw. And she asked me, hey, want to write a book? And I was like, yeah. What message do you want people to get from that book? Love who you are. No matter who you are in this world, you are special. Yes, this might, there might be trials and tribulations, but you have the strength to get over them, either if it's by yourself or with other people helping you. Cool. And Tim, you also are an influencer on TikTok. You have almost 40,000 followers. Yeah, I'm at like 39.9K right now. What kinds of videos do you post? I post stuff about autism. I post uh, funny videos. I post videos of me singing, sometimes serious stuff. Just whatever I feel, I put down. What kinds of videos about autism? No matter if it's funny videos or informative videos, I just want to shine a positive light on it and show that we can be fun. We can be energetic. We can be just an all out good people and also wonderful. Mm -hmm. What have you learned about yourself from doing these TikTok videos? I am really good at being on camera. And what I also learned is basically that there are like not a lot of people of color with autism or being on the autism spectrum that are brave enough to actually say what they feel. And I know that there are some, but I noticed that there's like a lot of people DMing me saying that I was their inspiration. Mm -hmm. So you've inspired them to do their own videos too? Yeah, some of them. And some people did their own videos before me, but there's like a lot of people who really just love my videos and make them have like a good day. Great. So Tim, do you feel like you can be yourself or do you sometimes feel like you need to hide or mask something about your autism? At first, I was honestly masking, but slowly, I'm okay with being myself. What are some of the ways you were masking before? Basically by like not telling everyone like what I am scared of or like my worries or just uh, scared that uh, they will like reject me for liking comics, for liking fun stuff or like my special interests. But later on, I found that I am okay with being myself, dressing up in like funny costumes and like showing action figures, showing my creative world. What are your plans after graduating from college? I want to continue on with TikTok, but I also want to continue on making music. And I have been making music when I was a kid and even like performed at different places, either by myself or with other people. Like for example, the Kansas City Boys Choir, which is led by Mr. Ali Robinson. But I also right now trying to mature my music. Like maybe even like remake some songs. Mm -hmm. What style of music is it? Pop, R&B, And there was one time that I reached gospel. Mm -hmm. Do you write the lyrics yourself and compose the melodies yourself? Yeah, I write the lyrics myself. And sometimes I would get different people to make the music for me. Because like I have like a vision, like I wanted this song to be like, dun, 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 dun. 
and other people would make the music. Do you have anything recorded? Yeah, I have some stuff recorded, but I'm just like trying to find a good day to like release it out. I even did cover songs. Do you want to give us a little sample? Um, okay. There is like a song that I made. Actually, it's my first song that I made called We're So Amazing. Okay. Some people don't treat us the same because they don't know how we were made. Anything is possible in life because we can love, we can be successful. Anything is possible if you just believe that we are amazing. We are so special if you believe that we can love. We can be successful. Anything is possible if you just believe that we are amazing. We are so special if you believe we're so amazing. We're so amazing. Yeah, we're so amazing. We're so amazing. Bravo. Thank you. Very cool. Did you take voice lessons? Yes, from many different people. Oh, you have a beautiful voice. Thank you. So, Tim, before we close out, is there anything else you'd like to add? Oh, yes. Have you ever seen the Snyder Cut of the Justice League trailer? It was so awesome. I cannot believe that they're actually going to introduce Darkseid finally. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, I'm not familiar, but maybe some of our listeners are. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Tim, do you have any advice for anyone in particular, maybe other people with autism or their family members? Yes. For everyone who has autism or on the autism spectrum, I don't care what ethnicity you are, who you love or whatever, but I just want to tell you that I want you to keep doing what you are doing if you are doing it positive. Like keep on believing in yourself, keep rising up and be yourself. And I also want to say thank you to the parents of autistic children or autistic people. If you're like teaching them right, just keep on teaching them, keep loving on them no matter what. And also for the teachers. If you are a teacher who love your students who are autistic, keep doing that because you are making a real impact in their lives. I just want to say to everyone that I love you all and always be kind to one another. Tim, I think you're doing something really important by inspiring other young people with autism. Thank you. So please continue making your fun videos to keep people informed about what autism is and to not be afraid to speak up about it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tim. You're very welcome. Take care. Thanks for tuning in to Autism Knows No Borders. Tim's stories reflect the daily realities of many autistic people. He used to mask his emotions and interests in fear of people rejecting him. With the support of individualized services at school and his loving mother at home, Tim was eventually able to celebrate his differences and accept himself for who he is. Tim's experiences also parallel the daily realities of many Black autistic males in the U.S. From a young age, Tim felt that he was seen as a bad kid for being autistic and Black. The combined stressors of being Black and autistic can negatively impact a person's mental health. Anxiety disorders are almost 25% more prevalent among autistic people than among the neurotypical population, with black people in general already being at least 7% more likely to develop them than other Americans. Additionally, as mentioned in episode 12 with Joy Johnson, 
individuals with autism have a higher likelihood of being approached by law enforcement, and the odds are even greater if they're also people of color. For links to the statistics referenced, please visit our show notes. As we promote equality for people with different abilities, it's important to examine the intersectionality between racism and ableism in order to create a world that is truly accepting of all diversity. Thanks for listening. Take care. You've been watching Autism Knows No Borders. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Also, we'd love to hear from you, so let us know what you think in the comment section. Click here to watch another interview from our podcast. You can also find us on your favorite podcast app. Tune in each week for engaging conversations of how people across the globe are inspiring change and building community. Thanks for watching. Take care.